Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Sugar Skull and Roses, and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Pinot Noir. And if you enjoy this video today, I do encourage you to like and subscribe, and you can also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a Stretched and Prime 16 by 20 inch canvas. You could certainly switch up the size if you're painting along with me, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, Mars black, green oxide, fire red, and deep yellow. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like to, but that's what I'm gonna be using. For my tools today, I have a, a whole bunch of tools. <laughs> I have a nine inch wide or um, wide paper plate. You don't necessarily need this, but I'm gonna cheat a little bit so I can have a nice easy round circle for my initial um, sketch. I have a standard number two pencil and I have three brushes today. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number nine round brush and I have a number two round brush and I will refer to these as small, medium and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you could switch those up a little bit if you'd like. And if you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna want a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that you could use during your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using, including the paper plate. Um, and so that's down there for you. But there's also another link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be drawing an outline of our skull. We're gonna be using our pencil. We're gonna use our fancy paper plate. I'm gonna be placing my paper plate about in the center of my canvas, about three and a half inches away from the top. If you're doing this freehand, you can certainly uh, create your own size circle by just making a couple of marks, maybe about three and a half away from there. Same thing on either side and then making yourself a big, huge circle. And then you can get rid of your, your tool somewhere. Meow. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come about the at the bottom center of my circle. I'm gonna come straight down and I'm gonna make a mark that's about, I would say two and a half to three inches away from the bottom of my canvas. And then I'm gonna draw the exterior of the the jawbone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down the right side of my circle about three quarters of the way, and then I'm, I'm gonna connect it. I'm gonna start a inside curved line. It's gonna curve into the um, inside of the skull, and then I'm gonna travel down straight for a little while, and then right about here is where I'm gonna start curving it, and I'm gonna have it meet my marker in the middle. And then I'll do the same thing over on the other side. So I'm gonna start a little bit down in through here, make myself an inside curve, come down around here, travel down straight for a little while, and then bring it in on a curve like this. And then I'm gonna make a couple more markers here. The next mark, I wanna have a little inside or a see-through spot where you're gonna be able to see the background in through here. So what I'm gonna do from right about here is I'm gonna make myself a little bit of a mark like that and another mark like this. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side, something like that. And then I'm gonna go something like this. And then I am going to be outlining where I'm gonna want my teeth to go. So from the bottom of here, I'm just gonna make myself a little bit of a curved line like that. 
And then I'm going to make myself another curved line down at the bottom part. And then I gotta make myself a nose hole and two eye holes. So how I'm gonna do this is about the center of my head or of this circle, I'm going to make myself the nose hole. So this nose hole is almost like the, an upside down heart. So I'm gonna come straight down a little bit and then I'm gonna pull it out like this. Do the, the top part of the heart, but upside down. <laughs> and it's maybe about, I would say, an inch, inch and a half away from the bottom part of your circle. And if yours doesn't end up the same exact size as mine, that's okay. And then I'm gonna make myself two eye holes over in through here. So I'm gonna make it a little bit higher than the top of my nose hole. And it's just gonna be a big circle. It's gonna come about halfway down the nose and maybe about, uh, I would say about an inch away from the side of the head. And these do not have to be perfect circles. They are just representational of the eye sockets. So they don't have to be super cylindrical and match each other perfectly. And that is all we're gonna be doing for the outline of our, pen, of our skull. We're gonna use our large paintbrush for the next step. So you can put your pencil down, get your large paintbrush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we are painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and the three colors that I'm using are brown, blue, and white. I'm gonna be applying my paint with a circular motion and I want mine to be pretty darn light but you could certainly do whatever color variation that you'd like. I'm not gonna wash my brush throughout this process and I'm gonna alternate my colors. So right now I have blue, brown, and white all on my brush at the same time. And I like to start at the top so I can kind of see what's going to happen so I don't surprise myself. And I'm just going to start to, to paint this in. I want to have light spots and dark spots. So maybe that's the way I start with those three colors. And then maybe the next time I just pick up white. So you can really play with the intensity of the color variation here. I'm going to go right up to my skull outline. I'm even going to touch the edge of it with my paint and you'll be able to most likely see your pencil mark underneath it. If you're, if you can't, if you're using really thick paint and it makes it difficult to see that pencil mark, then just go a little bit slower as you approach the pencil and that way you can go right up to it without crossing over it. So whatever type of paint you're using will kind of dictate if you can cross over it a little bit or if, uh, if you need to be a little bit more careful. And I am just using my circular motion as I go through this. I think I might want a touch more maybe blue and white. And again, you could make yours super blue or maybe a little bit more neutral with using more of the brown. So. Have fun with it. I've chosen to do these colors because they're gonna complement the rest of the, of the color scheme that I've chosen for, for the painting. So you can certainly, if you, you're choosing to do different colors, maybe you want yours a little bit in a different scheme. Maybe you want yours lighter or brighter or bluer or whatever color you'd like. And as I'm coming down towards the bottom of the face, I do need to put some of whatever I'm doing on the outside into these little sections in through there. So when I get down to that area, I, whatever I'm doing here, I wanna carry over into here. I think I wanna touch more blue. I don't want it to, uh, my skull is gonna be a little on the browner side, so I wanna make sure that you can see the difference in through here. So I've got a little bit of that bluish brown, light pastel-y kind of color in through here. And then I'm going to maybe add a little bit more white on my brush. I know that down at the bottom, it's gonna be overloaded with flowers and other details. So I'm not terribly concerned about what color happens as I come down through the bottom. But I do again, wanna make sure that whatever's happening over here should be happening in through there. 
I'm going to come pop over onto this side so I can get this area while I'm thinking about it. These are the type of areas that sometimes you just forget about. <laughs> so I want to make sure that my brain allows me to remember to do these. So when it's on your brain, you just go ahead and do it. And then I'm going to continue down towards the bottom of my canvas. And then we are going to be using the same paintbrush for the next step. So once you've got your background all nice and painted in, you're going to actually just wash and dry this brush as I'm finishing up here. And then you'll just get ready for the next step. Let's get this little bit left here. There we go. And we're going to go on to the next step now. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we're painting the base coat for our skull. I'm gonna be using my large brush and I'm gonna be using brown and white paint. So as I'm doing this, I'm not pre-mixing a color, I'm gonna be mixing my color on my skull. My thought process as I'm doing this is I wanna give it a little bit of dimension. So I'm gonna try and get the exterior edges to be a little bit darker and then the interior where like the forehead is and maybe the cheeks to be a little bit lighter. So when I'm doing this, I'm not using a ton of paint so that way I can, I can pick up more white or more brown and have it evident that I've done that on the fly because my paint will dry nice and quickly. But if I overload my brush with both colors, what happens is my brain will tell me to blend it, blend it, blend it, blend it on the canvas and it will all turn into one color. So I'm gonna start with just brown paint and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of get the paint around the edge, something like this. And again, I'm not using a ton of paint, but I'm using enough where it's staying a little wet as I work my way down this side. And now without washing my brush, I'm if I have a ton of paint on there, I can wipe it off on my paper towel, but without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up some white paint, and now I can get this to blend in with that darker edge. So I do it a little bit on the slower side so I can make sure that I have a nice blend, and I'm not gonna try and attempt the entire skull in one fell swoop because I wanna work with this paint as it's drying so I can get a nice, even blend as it's going from the dark to the light, which is where I'm gonna have it in the middle part. So I'm just kind of slowly working, working these two colors together. And then I feel like that's a nice transition. And if you don't get it perfect, it's all right because we're putting a whole bunch of decorations all over your skull too. So don't worry if it's not perfect. And I see that my paint is still wet over here. So I can just work with this dark paint that's still a little wet on the edge and I'm just kind of pulling it down and I'm just going to kind of get the paint off of my brush that's on there and as you get towards the interior it doesn't have to be any exact shade just if you can get it a little bit lighter on the inside than it is on the outside that's where you're going to get the most effect and you can always do multiple layers if you want to uh, if you're not able to get that dimensional effect right off the bat. I just picked up more white so I can get this forehead to be nice and light and to blend in with the with the shadowy area next to it. And again, if you, you know, have too much paint on your brush or it's just not working out for you, know that you're going to be having lots of decorations on there for one or you can let it dry and then just come back with a second layer and sometimes that second layer you'll be able to control put shadows where you want them or light spots elsewhere. So I'm picking up just a little bit more brown right now because I'm gonna start my shadowy area down at the bottom. So I didn't wash my brush and I'm just going along this edge here. And your skull does not have to be a perfect shape. It does not have to be perfectly symmetrical from one side to the other. We we as as humans have, you know, uneven skulls we have uneven faces so if yours is a little bit larger on one side or smaller on the other it's all right just roll with it and again we've got lots of decorations that we're going to be putting on i'm so excited about this painting it i have done 
several variations of this in my other painting classes, especially in my live painting classes, and it is amazing to me how everybody interprets their own decorations on these skulls differently. It's great. And you're gonna you're gonna experience it yourself. You'll be able to create your own decorative elements on this because everybody chooses to do something different. It might be a symbol of somebody in your past or in your present or you know somebody who has meant something to you. Everybody takes on these decorations in a different way or or your favorite things in life you can approach as additions to this beautiful skull and we want to get some area in through here as well so I'm gonna put a little bit of shadow over on this inside seam and again if you bump into areas like your mouth don't worry about it because we've got we're gonna be putting the, the mouth on in a little bit, but we've gotta first get these areas around it. And sometimes it's a little tricky to work these, these colors around outlines that we've already done. So just work slow. Don't work with a ton of paint on your brush and you'll be able to manipulate it as much as you want. And then we are going to be switching brushes to our medium brush. So once you've got this on here, oh, and if you ha have pencil marks that are showing through, you can do one of two things. Well, one of like three things. You can use a little bit more white. The white will help to make your paint less see-through. If that doesn't work, you can always just wait a minute, do another layer on it. The second, third layers will definitely help to get rid of pencil marks. Or the third easiest thing for us to do is we're gonna paint a decoration over it. <laughs> so don't worry if you can still see pencil marks. Uh, but right now, at the next step, what we're gonna be doing is we'll use our medium paintbrush. So once you've got your base coat on your beautiful skull here, you can put your large brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting in our skull holes <laughs> and where we wanna put our teeth later. So the colors that I'm gonna be using are black and white. I'm gonna be painting, I'm using my medium brush. I'm just gonna paint in the entire mouth area where we had it outlined with black paint. And then I'm gonna do a couple of little ripply marks along the edges, but I'll show you how I'm gonna do that in a second. So I'm just coloring it in black, something like this. And then at the top, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be making a couple of just little bumps. So this is gonna be where our teeth are gonna come out of. So I've done that on the top. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom edge. So something Something like this. And you can have as many teeth as you want. I am not going for anatomically correct here. I'm just having some fun. So if you want yours to be anatomically correct, you're gonna have to go look up how many teeth a person has. And you can make as many teeth as you want. And I've done that. And then I'm gonna do a little tiny a uh, connector piece that goes into the jaw just so it doesn't look like this is floating. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take about halfway up and then I'm just going to bring this down in through here. So this is gonna make it look more smiley as opposed to grumpy. We're giving the illusion of a, of a smile coming up on the sides. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna start about halfway down and then just give it a little bit of that. If you want yours to be grumpy, you can have yours grumpy. I want mine to be on the, on the happier side. And then that's all I'm gonna do for the mouth. I'm gonna go up into the nose. So I want my, my nose and my eyes to almost look like th three-dimensional, like we can feel that it goes in. So I don't wanna just do it black. How I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna start with black up in the top left corner, and then as I come down towards the right, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white, so it'll go a little bit gray on me. So I'm gonna start up at the top, just filling in 
this with black paint, making sure I have it a good layer on there, and I can even come down the top right a little bit. I'm going to do this whole left side with black paint, bringing it all the way to my pencil mark. And then once I've got that entire left side painted, now I'm picking up black with a little bit of white on my brush. Make sure I have enough white there. So I have black and a little bit of white. And I'm going to get that bottom right corner to be lighter. So test it out in the bottom right corner. And if it's light or too light or too dark, you can adjust it then. But right now what I'm gonna do is I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel. And I wanna get these two colors to blend in together. So I'm just taking both wet the black and the gray, and I'm just getting them to blend in together. And if you haven't done this type of blending on the fly, it might take you a little, you know, a couple of tries to get it, but I like to wipe my brush off a lot, so that way I have control over this, this little bit of a gradient that we're doing. I went outside my lines a little bit, but that's okay. The nose hole can grow if we need it to, and just making sure I've got enough paint in through there and then I'm just gonna make sure that these work together, wiping my brush off on my paper towel as much as I need to. And if it was too light, you can always just add more black to the equation and that's gonna help you to get that gradient as extreme or subtle as you want. So you might want it really evident that it goes into the light area. You might want it a little bit darker than I have. So just use your own visual preference as you go through this process. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. The nose is a little bit trickier because you have an odd shape. I'm gonna do the same thing to both of these. I'm gonna just use black on my brush. I'm gonna do a good amount of the hole with just black paint. I'm going all the way to my pencil marks so that way I don't have to contend with them later and I'm covering a good area of the eye holes with the black, something like this. And then as I go down towards that bottom right corner, I'm picking up a little bit of white and black on my brush at the same time, get this bottom right corner to be a little bit lighter. So it has some nice dimensional element to it. And then I'll get these two colors to blend in somewhere in the middle. And again, you could have yours more extreme than mine. It's totally up to you. But if you can get some sort of gradient going from dark up in the top left to lighter down at the bottom. And this eye might not even matter because you might have a big, huge flower in front of it like I'm going to. But at least you get some good practice before you go on to this eye over here. So I've got some, I picked up just black for this eye over here. And again, I'm gonna get a lot of that top left area and in towards the, on the left side of this eye hole is gonna have just black. Gonna bring it over here, something like that. And now I'm gonna, without washing my brush, just pick up a little bit of black and white and get this bottom right hand corner to be a little bit lighter. And then we are going to be using this same paintbrush for the next step. So once you've got your eye holes nice and painted in, your eyes and your nose hole and your mouth area painted in, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our roses. So roses are a, a lot of times associated with love. So I think that a lot of people who are painting these type of paintings are doing it because they are trying to put symbols of the people that they love or admire in it. So a lot of people use roses. So we're gonna be using roses. I'm choosing to do red and blue roses. You can certainly do any color you want. Flowers can be artificially colored or they can come from nature. So whatever you want to associate your color palette with, feel free to do so. But I'm gonna be doing red and blue. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with my red ones and I want my first layer of these flowers to be really deep and dark. So that way when I go to put the highlights and the bright tones on top of them for the second step of them later, 
will have nice contrasting um, tones to it. So I'm gonna be using red and brown on my brush at the same time. Sometimes I might pick up just red, sometimes I might pick up just brown, but those are gonna be my two dominant colors that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have a huge one over here in the right hand bottom corner, and I want it to overlap the corner of my skull's head here. So I'm gonna just make almost like a scalloped edge to this um, like a silhouette of the of the flower and I'm just doing kind of impressionistic flower here I know that I want it to be representational of a rose but it doesn't have to be a hundred percent realized and exactly as the rose is constructed but I'm going to give you a nice easy way to make it very representational. So I did kind of a scalloped edge around around the exterior. I'm going to have the nucleus or the center of my flower over here. So the way that I do my roses is I do it with almost like a spiral type brush stroke and I'm going to use a lot of paint on my brush. I want it to be a little bit darker down at the bottom of the particular flower, especially down in this corner. So I'm gonna be using more brown down at the bottom. And then it's not, I'm just gonna forewarn you, it's not gonna look awesome after this step. This is really just our base coat for it. But in my head I'm saying, okay, this is a petal. These are gonna be petals around it. But I'm keeping my brush kind of in a circular type brush stroke around this nucleus and that's going to help me when I go to put the highlights and the shadows within the petals that's going to help me to form them form them in a more realistic type fashion and I'm just continuing to alternate my colors I'm still giving that little spiral in the middle and you don't have to paint it in a hundred percent you can certainly have little pops of the background showing through. Again, this is just the first layer on this, so don't worry if you don't get it painted in 100%. And then I think I'm gonna have one over here on the left-hand side. This one's gonna be smaller than that one. I'm gonna have it come maybe about halfway up the nose, so maybe I'll start my scalloped edge like this, and I think I'm gonna have it come maybe about almost as far down as the mouth is. So if I travel over to the left and maybe up a little bit, that'll give me a good area to put the exterior of it. And then maybe I'll travel, give myself a nice scalloped edge, something like this. And then I have to decide where my nucleus is gonna go. I'm gonna put my nucleus somewhere around here. So that's where my spiral starts from. And it really doesn't matter if you spiral it with red or with brown or just kind of alternate those colors. That's what's gonna help you to, again, have the light spots and the dark spots that'll help you to form that flower when we, when we go to do the highlights and the shadows of it. So that's gonna be that one. I'm gonna have a nice little bud up in some leaves up in through here. So my bud is gonna be maybe, I would say right about here. And the bud just kind of almost looks like, uh, I don't know, a teardrop type shape. Maybe something like that. <laughs> or like one of those old Christmas lights, those really huge ones that you're, well, at least my mom had them on our Christmas tree. They were wicked huge lights. I think they're kind of retro now, but anyways. So I'm gonna do a couple of blue flowers too. So I'm gonna wash and dry that medium brush. And I want, I want my blue to be a neutral kind of blue. So I am gonna be using blue and brown, but I'm actually gonna pre-mix a little bit of this. So it is very complementary to my background where I used brown as well. So again, I'm using blue and brown, but I've pre-mixed my blue so it's got, it's more neutral with the brown itself in it. So I'm gonna have one down in through here. And again, I'm just gonna kind of make my scalloped little edges, something like this. And again, you can make yours in different positions than mine. You could have different flowers. You could have, you know, yellow flowers if you wanted to. I'm gonna have my nucleus here. So that's where I'm gonna start my spiral. I picked up brown. I'm now I'm just alternating my brown and my pre-mixed blue that I made. And maybe you want yours more on the browner side or more on the bluer side. But again, we will be doing a second coat on these. So if it's not 
perfect right now. Don't worry about it. You'll be able to adjust it into whatever color you'd like later. And I'm gonna do another one that's almost behind my skull over here on the right hand side. So I think I'm gonna have maybe a little peekaboo spot of a petal back here. And then I'm gonna come up maybe a little bit higher than that nose and do something like that. And I think this one is gonna come right down and maybe hide behind this flower too. So this one's gonna be a big one tucked behind. So I'm gonna start my nucleus. I think I'll have this right about here and that's where I'm gonna start my spiral. And it's okay, to, you know, if you accidentally bump into your, your skull, don't worry about it. You can always fix anything. So if you bump into it, don't, you know, it's okay. When we go to do the highlights and shadows, you'll be able to make any little corrections or at any time you can just clean up that little face edge if you need to. I did say that I was going to do a little peekaboo spot in through here, so I'm carrying that petal color in through here. And then I want to make sure that I have a good representation of these colors. I want it to hide behind this red one. So I'm gonna put this color all the way to the edge of that. And then let's see here, oh, oh, maybe a little bit more brown in this center area. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer of your beautiful flowers on here, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're doing the first layer of, I'm gonna call it the eye flower. <laughs> you can, I, I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using for this first layer, I'm gonna be using a combination of red, brown, and white. You could certainly make this any, any color combination you want. I'm gonna have mine almost like, look like a daisy coming out of the eye. Um, the only tricky part that you're going to have is the crossover area from the dark into the light. So whatever petals that you have poking out past that point, that's where you're going to want to be using a little bit of white in your color combination. And this is, again, only the first layer to this. So if you don't get that transition, great. Don't worry about it. Um, and we did paint the underneath, so if you want to see part of it, you can certainly do that. I might opt to have a couple of my petals almost spread open a little bit so you can see the inside of that eye. But again, it's up to you how dramatic you want it to be. You could cover up the whole socket if you want to. So I'm going to take some red and brown and maybe a touch of white and just make myself a pre-mixed color. You could certainly just use the colors on your brush at the same time, it's totally up to you. But again, this is just gonna be my base coat. I want a kind of a rich color, um, which is why I wanna use the brown in it, but here I go. So I think I have a, I'm gonna have a center area for my flower. So I'm gonna be starting that center area by making just some little polka dots, some random polka dots in the in the center area. And then I'm gonna have my petals coming out a little bit away from that center area. So you could have yours, I'm gonna have mine a little bit on the curved side and you could have yours big or small or whatever you want. I am gonna leave a little bit of space between some of them so you can see the background behind it. Uh, but if you wanted yours really super full, that's totally okay. You do it whatever way is visually appealing to you. And then I'm just gonna go around the entire eye socket and make as many of these petals as I want. Maybe some areas I've got the petals touching one another, maybe some places they're overlapping one another. So you can really have fun with this. Maybe I've got a small one back here and then a bigger one. These two, maybe these two will touch in through here. So have fun, just leave the petals a little away from that center area. So that way uh, it'll look a little bit more like a realistic flower by the time we're done with it. And again, if you can still see the line underneath where it's crossing from the light to the dark, 
don't worry about it because we're going to have another big step that will help to to cover that up and then we're going to use the same brush for the next step so once you've got your first layer of this eye flower you can wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to be doing for the next step is we are going to be doing the first layer of our leaves and our stems and i'm going to be using my medium paintbrush the colors that i'm going to be using are green and black uh, and some brown i'll use green black and brown i am going to be making myself a really dark green this is going to be a nice base coat for my leaves and we'll add highlights and all that good stuff on later but when you're mixing the green and the black try not to go too too black because it will turn darker as it dries and if you don't go dark enough you can always add more to it later when we because we're going to do a second coat on them but i want to make sure that i'm mixing enough because i'm doing a lot of leaves here so i leaves and stems so i want to make sure that i mixed myself a good quantity and then as I'm painting, I will be using my dark green with brown on my brush. So that way I'll have uh, multiple tones within those areas. So I'm gonna put a couple of strategic leaves on and, well, stems, I think I'll start with my stems so we can get an idea of where this is all going. So I am gonna have this cool flower that's coming out of the eye, I want the stem to be coming out the other eye socket. So it almost looks like it's grown in there. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna have it coming from here, it's gonna tip down to maybe about here and then ride along the face and hide back behind my flower down there. So I've got my green and my custom green and a little bit of brown on my brush at the same time I'm gonna start in through here and it's gonna be dark so don't worry about how dark it is this is this is my plan and then I'm gonna come down in through here with a little bit of a curve and then I'm gonna ride down this cheek bone jawbone thing and I'm gonna bring it in behind my rose the red rose down at the bottom. And then I'm going to make a couple of leaves coming off of it. So maybe I have a little leaf coming off in through there. Maybe I've got one coming off in through here. And really when I'm doing these leaves, I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm, I, I'm kind of pushing my brush so it's wide at the base and then I can kind of curl it or curve it off on the edges and it's going to look a little two-dimensional right now but when we go to put the other details on it later you can have it crossing over one of your your flowers if you want to you can really have as many in here as you want to and the, again i'm still just using green then my custom green and brown to get these colors on here my next stem that I'm going to do, the only other stem that I'm really going to see is the one for this flower here, and then everything else is going to be leaves after that. So I'm going to have this stem coming out from behind this flower, and I want my stems to really have some movement in them, so I'm going to make them have a, a little bit of a bend in it. So that's going to be that stem. It is going to actually travel to the head because I'm going to have some leaves coming out of the head. This is going to be a double stem. I'm going to have another piece of it coming in through this direction. And again, you can have fun. I am using, I'm fully tapping into my imagination when it comes to doing this. I'm putting a little leaf on the side of here just while I'm here. I can do that. And I'm going to put, I'm just reloading my brush here. I'm going to put a leaf coming out of the bottom of my stem. This one's going to be pretty darn big. I think I'll have it something like that, something like this. And I'm going to color in the whole thing, bringing it right up to the edge of my flower. And if your paint looks streaky right now, don't worry about it. That's why we're going to do two coats. It will definitely look a little streaky when it's wet. Uh, just because we are using the darker colors and we're not utilizing any white in the paint right now The white helps to make it less see-through and we're not doing that right now. So 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of float around, making sure I have enough of enough leaves that I want. So I'm going to put some leaves coming off of this side of this flower. And again, you can have yours formed whatever way you want to. Mine, I am trying to give them a you know a little authentic representational re representation of what rose leaves look like, but. You could certainly, if you're going the imaginary route, feel free to make yours whatever way that you want. So the rose leaf is gonna be a little bit wider at the base and then kind of point at the, at the tip of it. So again, we're using this nice dark color so it will have some good dimensional elements to it. And I'm gonna do another one in through here. And again, have fun with your formation. It doesn't have to be exactly as mine. Your flowers might be positioned different than mine and it would make sense for you to do yours different than mine. So just make it whatever way is gonna work on your canvas. I want one over in through here and I'm going right up to the edge of my flower and then just painting the entire uh, leaf in. I'm gonna have a couple in this little gap in through here. I think this one is gonna maybe come into the face a little bit. And again, you can have, you know, work on your imagination, fill in whatever spaces you want to. We are obviously gonna have many more things on the painting, but the, the leaves, the greenery, is gonna add a nice natural element to the painting. So you can, you know, have fun. You, maybe you wanna have way more than I have. Maybe you want to do exactly as I have, but it's totally up to you. I think, let's see, what else? Well, maybe I'm gonna have one coming out this in through here, and then I definitely want some going up that right-hand side. So I'm gonna have, let's see, maybe somewhere in through here. And I just like to have the flow of these and have them a little bit pointier at the end. And, you know, this one is, more viney than it is a actual flower leaf. So, you know, tapping into my creative license and imagination and making it whatever way I want it to look. <laughs> and then maybe I'll have a couple coming out here. And you can see you can cross over one another and we'll make them look a little bit better on that next step. I'm gonna have maybe, maybe I got another one coming out over here. I've got a one I want to do up in that top right hand corner and then I think I'm going to get this to drape over the head a little bit too which is going to be really fun. So over here maybe I've got this one coming, I don't know, something like that. I'm going to have a big one over here. I've got a lot of paint on my brush so I can fill in this gap right in through here. I'm going to have a big one right here. So it's almost looking like it's encapsulating my beautiful skull here. There we go. And then I'll have another one coming out maybe, I don't know, maybe over here, traveling pretty far over into the canvas. And again, it, the design element of this, you might want yours to be different than mine. You might want them placed differently. I'm gonna have some on the top of the head, almost, I don't wanna say it's gonna look like hair, but it might you know, resemble some sort of natural element for our, our beautiful skull here. So maybe I have something like that, as if maybe these, these pieces were painted on. As we get into the further decorations of our skull, obviously some of the elements are gonna look more painterly, as if somebody came and painted decorations onto the skull, so they don't necessarily have to, you know, look as if it's resting or realistic as these flowers, maybe it looks more painterly. So again, you just have fun and create whatever designs you'd like. I think I'm gonna make this a combination of looking painterly and coming off the top of the head. So I am totally having fun here and making it whatever I want it to be. So I'm gonna have some, maybe another one like that. Maybe I've got this one here and maybe another one in through there. I'm just having too much fun 
but now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to color in this little spot in through here and then we are going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got the first layer of all your leaves and your stems, you can wash and dry this medium brush. There we go. And get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our teeth. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using a white, brown, and a teeny tiny bit of yellow. So I'm gonna make myself a, uh, a kind of a darker tooth color. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take white with a little bit of brown and just a teeny tiny touch of yellow. And again, I know that this is gonna be darker when it dries. So I don't want it too, too dark, but I definitely want it darker than white because we're gonna be adding a highlight onto the teeth in a little bit. So I definitely want it to be a little bit on the darker side. So, and I want it to be a little toothy color. So that's where the yellow comes into place. So I've got my, my tooth color that I want. And I know that top teeth are gonna be typically longer than the bottom teeth. So as I do this, I'm gonna try and make my top teeth a little bit bigger. And I'm just making long kind of oval type shapes. I'm gonna have my top teeth come down, you know, maybe a little bit around that halfway mark, maybe a little bit lower. And then as I get around the edges, I'm not gonna put teeth too far over into the into the corners of the mouth because that the corners of the mouth have kind of disappear in the shadows. So here we go. And I'm gonna put them where I have the bumps. So if I have one, two, three, four, five, six bumps, then I'm gonna have six teeth. But you might have more teeth than mine. So I'm gonna do this. And I'm not gonna use a lot of paint on my brush. So if you do have a lot, I feel like I have too much right now, I'm gonna wipe it off on my paper towel because I want this to kind of be I don't know, I don't want to say see-through, but definitely it doesn't have to be a solid, beautiful color. We want it to look like it's aged and it's had a little bit of weathering and, you know, the teeth can touch in some places and not in other places. So really there's not a rule that you have to follow to get these on here. You can have them as... Um, uneven as you want. They can be as crooked as you want. I'm reloading my brush with a little bit more of my color. So just know that you can certainly have have fun with your teeth. They don't have to be perfect. They, you know, my teeth aren't perfect. I don't know if yours are, but mine are not perfect. So, and if you have the, the outside teeth going up a little bit higher than those center teeth that will add to the illusion of a smile. So I think I'm going to put these ones up just a little bit on the on the outside edges. So uh, there's all kinds of ways that you can add to the illusion of something. And if I needed to, I could uh, bring those front teeth down a little bit. So you know, you just have fun with manipulating how these how these teeth are placed. I'm going to put another one in through here, and then I'll work on my bottom ones. And again, I'm not using a lot of paint. The bottom ones could be hidden a little bit behind a front one if you wanted them to. So just again, ha have some fun. I'm gonna try and put mine in where I already have the little bumps, but you might have not put as many bumps as you want to, or you might wanna put more, so I'm, I'm sure nobody's gonna be counting your your teeth to bump ratio <laughs> on, on your skull. So again, just have some fun. I hardly have any paint on my brush right now. I'm just adding these colors in, in through here. And then we're gonna be using the same brush. So once you've got your first layer of your teeth on here, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing for the next step is I am doing the first layer of my face decorations. So again, this is a completely a personal touch. You can make whatever designs that you want. 
people use this as a symbolic gesture or thought to celebrate a life. So you can, it's an, and it's, I think it was originated in the Mexican culture, but it's, it's adopted by cultures all over the world. So please feel free to use whatever colors you want, whatever design elements you want. Um, I'm going to be doing more of a painterly kind of interpretation. Uh, I'm going to be using initially for my first layer of these decorations, I'm going to be using white, yellow, green, and some of my pre-mixed blue. So how I'm going to be doing this is I'm going to do a series of dots around this particular eye with white paint. So I have white paint on my brush and I'm just doing pretty uh, systematic dots sequence you could really make yours uneven you could have them on you know not equally spaced apart but if you you know whatever is coming out of you naturally that's again what I recommend doing or if you want to create your own decoration please feel free to do so I think I'm gonna have I've got a couple more over on this side and I have obviously my my stem to contend with, so I'm just working around it the best that I can or want to. You can put more leaves and stems and stuff wherever you want to. I'm gonna use this white paint and I'm also gonna put a white line on the left side of my nose hole almost to give it a highlight. So again, this is just part of what I am referring to as my decoration process. So I've got a nice white line in through there. I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to be using green, yellow, and white on my brush. I'm going to have maybe a couple of teardrops or dew drops or water drops coming at the bottom of this flower in through here. So I'm going to have maybe a nice big one in through here. I've got it coming down past where my nose is, maybe a little bit more green and yellow. I feel like I had too much white in there. So again, you can make it into whatever color combination you want. I'm gonna have maybe another one in through here that's a little bit smaller. And then maybe I'll have a third one coming strategically. <laughs> Perhaps I should cover up that boo-boo that I have right there. So let's put one right in front of that. And then what else am I gonna do? I think I'm gonna have some yellow, almost tribal type decorations around the face. So I'm going to use yellow and white on my brush at the same time. And this I can use to strategically hide some of the my pencil mark that I have underneath there. So I'm going to come maybe down this side and maybe swirl this up like that. And I would put one over here, but you can't see that. So maybe I'll put one down in through here, a little swirl like that. I'm gonna put an equal one or a similar one coming over this side, something like that. I think I'm gonna put a couple of these lines, maybe one in through here and here and again free format you don't have to do yours exactly as mine this is just something that you know i am feeling at the moment so this is how i'm going to be decorating mine and now i'm going to uh, wash my brush and i'm going to use some of that blue the uh, original custom blue that we created and that's going to be the i'm going to put a flower down on the chin so maybe I go something like this. And again, this is just a, you know, your first step to this. So I'm gonna be adding additional decorations and stuff on a second go around, but I like getting the base coat of these type of steps down so I can add finer detail and clean up edges and all that kinds of stuff on a second step. But this first step really gets my, my ball rolling. I'm gonna have a, a neat decorative piece coming down the, the from the nose. So I'm gonna do maybe a line coming down in through here with maybe a little 
bubble scallop thing on the bottom and maybe I'll do a couple of almost like a flower type decoration in through here and then maybe I will put a little bit of something in there that's looking pretty oh I know what else I want to do I want to put a little bit of this color at the coming up the sides of my mouth and over here and again you can see I'm just kind of freeforming this as I as I want I'm going to use this almost like a lipstick too so I'm going to put it not that skulls have lipstick but I want something around my mouth so I'm going to use my blue to do that I'll do it on the top too and then I think that's going to do it for my first round of that. I'm going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer of your face, your skull decorations, you can wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are finishing our roses. We're going to be using our medium brush and the colors that I'm going to be using are black, brown, red, yellow, white, and blue and my premix blue <laughs> so a whole lot of colors i think the only color i'm not using is green so you can use all the other colors on your palette so how i'm going to do this is in a kind of messy fashion i'm really concentrating my goal here is to add highlights and shadows to the petals of these flowers so i'm going to start with a little bit of black and brown on my brush for I'm gonna start with this main big one down here I want it to be darker down at the bottom and in the center of the flower and then as I get towards the exterior leaves I'll have it lighter and lighter so I have black and brown on my brush right now and I'm just adding a little bit of darkness to it maybe a little bit more black so you can actually see it and I want to have a couple of strategically placed uh, dark spots so it looks like there's a little bit of a shadow and so you can definitely see the motion of those petals now I'm going to pick up red and brown and that's going to in essence fill in my gaps the red and the brown is going to help to make sure everything is talking together properly and again just red and brown is my next kind of go around on on the petals and then once I feel like I've got it nice and colored in I think I need a little bit more red maybe maybe a touch more of the darkness in through here I really want this bottom part to be nice and dark but I don't want to lose the motion of those petals once I've got it nice and what I feel to have some deep shadows within there now I'm going to start using red yellow and white as my highlight colors and the reason why I'm using yellow also is because if I was to just use red and white I would have a big pink flower and I don't want to have a pink flower I want to have a red flower so in order to counteract the pink I use a little bit of yellow too so I'm going to put red yellow and white on my brush at the same time and I'm very carefree when it comes to adding these highlights so that way it looks nice and natural I am going with the with the idea of this is a petal back here so maybe I'm adding a little bit there I've got a petal in through here and over here I don't want to do it necessarily in those dark spots but I definitely want to make sure that I have some lighter petals throughout the entire what I would call the exterior of the of the flower so I'm just in a nice carefree ma manner adding these curved lighter lines that are going to give the viewer the information that these are the highlighted parts of those petals and you can always wipe your brush go back into the red a little bit if you want to or whatever you need to do to get the 
as much popping as you as you want you can always have multiple colors on your brush too and I feel like that's looking pretty good so I'm gonna move on to my next one over here so I don't wash my brush I'm just gonna wipe it off on my paper towel start back with my black and brown get myself a couple of really almost deep shadowy kind of areas throughout this throughout the flower petals and then once I feel like I've got enough shadowy type area, now I'm going to start picking up red and brown on my brush at the same time just to fill in those gaps like we did on the last one. Whenever I do steps like this, I, you know, I do have a, a, an order that help, even though I'm making them, you know, carefree looking, I do have an order because I, I want them to have a bit of realism and to have dimension to them so that's why I'm going to approach each one the same way. Now that I've got my uh, my shadows, I filled in my gaps, now I'm just picking up red, yellow, and white. And maybe this one isn't as bright as that one, maybe this one is in the shadow a little bit. So maybe I don't add the intensity of the highlights that I have on that one. And then once I've got this one done, which I feel like that's good because I want to keep it kind of in the shadows, I'm going to go to this one up here. This one is a closed petal or a closed bud. So I'm going to add black and brown to my brush and I'm going to add a little bit of a, of a seam, so to speak, where the petal is closed and it's almost casting a shadow upon the part of the flower that's next to it. Oh, and I want a little bit of shadow in where the bud goes into the leaf, the leaf. So I've got that brown and black a little bit there. I wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm going into to red and brown to fill in my gaps, if there are any. And then I'm gonna go into red, yellow, and white for my highlight. I definitely want there to be a nice highlight here up at the top and then just get it to blend in with the rest of that flower. And then I'm gonna repeat the same process. Yeah, that looks good. Same process for my blue ones. So if you want to, you can wash your brush or just wipe it off on the paper towel like I do. So I'm gonna start with black and brown and I'm gonna do my deep dark shadow areas. So black and brown, add a couple of little shadow areas. And again, it doesn't have to be anything perfect, just something that's gonna give the illusion that there are a couple of deep, deep dark areas with it. And if you paint over one of your leaves, don't worry about it. We're gonna, we're gonna, we have a second layer on those leaves in a minute, so. Again, just getting a couple of nice shadows within there. Now, I have to, I have to make some more of my blue. Hold on a second. <laughs> so we did blue and brown to make that original blue I ran out. So I'm just on the fly making some more here. So blue and brown, that's, going, my, that's my pre-mixed blue. I'm gonna just use that to fill in my gaps here. And I could use just brown as well. So my pre-mixed blue and brown will help to fill in my gaps, which is exactly what I did on my red flowers. And now that I've got those all nice and filled in, I'm gonna use my, I don't, I don't need to alter, I don't need to add yellow this time. I'm gonna use just blue and white as my highlight color on my brush at the same time. You could, I suppose, use the regular blue without it being the, the cobalt blue straight itself. That'll, that'll be a nice contrasting color, but that might be a little bit too bright uh, or unnatural. Of course, <laughs> blue, blue roses are very natural as it is, <laughs> but you can certainly add whatever texture or color variation that you would like. And again, I'm just using my circular motion. I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna move down to this one down here. So I'm going with black and brown to start. You can see I, I repeat on my steps like I was saying before. So black and brown to get in a couple of nice shadows in through here. And then I'll use my original blue with a little bit of brown to fill in my gaps. Make sure that I've got the whole thing painted in here. 
I might add a little bit more shadow in that center, but we'll, we'll see in a second here. So that's going to fill in my gaps. Now I'm going to use my uh, pre-mixed blue with some white to add some nice highlights along the edges of these petals. Maybe uh, you can do it a little bit lighter at the top maybe a little bit darker down at the bottom but whatever you're feeling that's that's what you that's what you want to go with continue to utilize that spiral in the center to give the viewer the information that it is in fact a rose and then I'm thinking that's looking pretty good so we're going to utilize this same brush for the next step so once you've got this second layer of your roses done you can wash and dry this same brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our petals on this eye flower here. So I'm gonna use my medium brush and you really could use whatever colors that you want, but I'm gonna be using a little bit of that original red and also yellow and white because I want them to really pop out. So I'm gonna use my original red that pre-mixed we used with brown and a little bit of white just to kind of get these a little on the wet side so when I go to put the vibrant highlight on it, it they'll they'll blend in nicely together so again I'm just using that original red to get a second like wet coat on here and now I'm gonna pick up yellow and white and I'm gonna use quite a bit of paint so I'm going to in essence, add a, a little highlight in the center like this. I think I want a little bit more yellow on my brush. Without mixing it right now, without blending it in, I'm just adding this really cool highlight. And this is gonna help to make it look like it's got a little bit of movement. And it's also gonna help to cover that separation point that you might be able to see through the paint. And then I'm just gonna start to blend it in a little bit. And you might want yours, I like mine to have a lot of contrast here in the colors, but you might want yours to be more of a solid color. It's really up to you on the visual sense of where if you want it to be one solid color and you know just a, a bit of a highlight in the middle of it, great, totally up to you. You can add more of that original red back or a little bit of yellow. You have fun with it and make it as vibrant or as subtle as you want. I'm leaving a little bit of that darker shade around the edges and I'm giving my highlight a little bit of a curve so that's gonna make these petals look like they're on the rounded side. And then when I have that light color on my brush, I'm gonna add some little seeds or speckly marks in the center so that way that looks a little bit more three-dimensional as well. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your petals and the center of your eye flower all set, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our stems and our leaves. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and the colors that I'm using are brown, green, yellow, and white. I will most likely not use that dark green. I'm gonna use the, light, the lighter, the original green. But if I run into problems where I feel like I need to enhance that darkness, I will go back into that dark green. But my dominant colors are gonna be brown, the bright green, yellow, and white. And I'm really just looking to add some highlights here and there. I don't need anything fancy. I wanna make sure that the leaf looks completely painted. So if I have some streaks from the original color, that's where my additive of the, the, bur the, uh, the, the green oxide, not the darker one that we created, will help to make it look nice and finished. So I'm gonna just, add some of that green oxide color on top of the dark color and I go green, yellow, and white on my brush at the same time is going to add my highlight to it. 
Your highlight can be as bright as you want. You could increase the intensity by using more white and yellow. So feel free to make it as bright as you want. That's how I'm gonna approach the, the leaves. As for the, um, the stems, that's when I'm gonna be using a little bit of brown. So I can use green with brown to add a little bit of more of an earthy tone into the actual stem itself. So green and brown on top of that original dark green is gonna add a real nice earthy tone to it. So green and brown, gonna just hit this one over and through here. Make sure that it looks like it's fully painted. That's the, you know, the biggest objective here. You don't want it to look like you've missed any particular spots. And then I'm just gonna kind of continue throughout Throughout the process, green and brown are gonna be nice neutralizing type color combination. And then my highlights are gonna be yellow, green, and white. And you can really ha have as many highlights as you want. You can have the tips of your petals really super bright. You can have as much sunshine showing on them as you want, but you definitely just wanna make sure that you have a nice full coat throughout the entire petal. If you want one uh, petal, leaf, if you want one leaf looking brighter or more alive than the other one or making it look like it's in front of the other one, you just add lighter colors to it. So I've got a little bit more yellow and white on my brush here, and this is gonna make this one stand out in front of the other one. And I'm not really doing anything super duper fancy here. Sometimes maybe I'll just add little streaks of the brighter green on top of the dark green. That's gonna help to make it look nice and finished, but it'll also give it a little bit of dimension, of dimension to it as well. And if you feel like you wanna go back into that original dark green, feel free to do so, especially in these darker sections. Where the, where the leaves feel like they should be in the shadows, you don't wanna bring them into, you don't want them to be too, too bright. So you can certainly go into that original green and utilize it as much as you need to. So I'm gonna just make sure I've got a nice, good tone on here. And if you do have little leaves like that that are in front, that's definitely a great spot to have a nice highlight. So green, yellow, and white is gonna help me to pop that one right in front of that one, which is a fun thing to do. And I'm just gonna kind of cruise right along all of these. This, you know, something like this, I can just add my green, yellow, and white, give it a nice little highlight in through here. Again, if you want more intensity, just use more white. So if I want this to really show up and be in front of something else. I'm gonna utilize more white. I do have this little one down here. My biggest probably suggestion is make sure you hit every area again. So where even, even if you think that that leaf looks awesome, add an additional little pop of a highlight or add a little bit more of a shadow. That's gonna really help to bring it into a more realistic look. I just added brown and yellow onto my brush because I want this stem to really be seen that's coming out of the skull, but I don't, I want you to notice it. So I wanna add a little bit different of a tone to it. And then I'm gonna go green, yellow, and white to add a nice, highlight onto this leaf coming out and through here. And you can see I'm, I'm really not going super fast right now, just wanna make sure that I have my highlights and my shadows wherever I want them to be. I gotta tidy up this one over here and I'm making sure that I hit every area a second time. So you could imagine these to be realistic or you can imagine them to be imaginary. <laughs> However, it works for you. I'm just really concentrating on making sure that they look fully painted and then I've hit every area a second time. I'm gonna make sure I've got a nice 
second coat up here, this area up here looks like it definitely needs some additional work. So green, yellow, and white is gonna be my highlight. I'm gonna put this one in front of the other one and you can see just adding that bit of highlight on it really just brings it to life. I'm gonna make the tip really, really bright on it. So maybe some more yellow and white and that's gonna just pull it right in, you know, into focus. It pulls it closer to us. I'm gonna put a little bit up there. I definitely want to make sure I've got up here painted a second coat. I'm just concentrating on making sure everywhere has a second coat on it. I'm going to finish this area. The area I'm probably going to do the lightest is on top of the head, just so that really looks nice and, and vibrant and bright and our face gets drawn or our eyes get drawn to the skull itself. You don't want, at, when, when you have a painting like this that has a ton of detail on it and a lot of other things that could be very interesting to look at, you still want to try to stay true to whatever your focal point or the part is that you really want the viewer to look at the most or concentrate the most on or be attracted to the most and for me it's the skull so although i want my my flowers to be really pretty along the edges and my stems to have dimension to them and all that good stuff i don't want them to overpower the painting i really want the viewer to pay attention and to look at the the skull itself so that's where i don't want these to be super too bright but definitely have something to them so now i'm going to start working on that one for the head so i'm going to use more yellow and white just to get it a little bit lighter and more vibrant and you can again make yours as light or as dark as you want it's totally up to you i'm going to add a little bit more yellow and white maybe over here on these on these little tips. And if at any time you feel like your brush is overloaded and it's not it's not giving you the colors that you want on the canvas, you may have to wash it and dry it. So sometimes when we're doing a step like this and we're just you know kind of alternating from one color to the next, our brush can definitely easily get overloaded with too many colors and then everything just starts looking the same. So if that happens to you, just wash and dry it. I am a very lazy brush washer, um, so I don't wash my brush a lot, but don't feel like you have to be a hero here. If you want to or need to wash your brush, feel free to do so. And then I'm just gonna kind of pull some of this color up into these little add pieces up here. And again, you can make them as vibrant or as subtle as you want. I'm leaving some of those dark tones underneath because I that I put them there for a reason. I want them to add to the dimensional element of this and I'm thinking that that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to be switching to my small brush for the next step. So once you've got your leaves and your stems all nice and painted in here, you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing our teeth. So I'm gonna be using some brown paint, I'll use white paint, and I'll use some of my original tooth color as well. So I'm gonna start, oh, and I'm using my small brush. I'm gonna start with just a small bit of brown paint and really what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow in between the teeth. You could, if you needed to or wanted to, you could use a little bit of black. So if, if you don't feel like your brown is giving you enough of a shadow type area, then you could certainly utilize black. But I'm just looking for maybe darkness, a little bit more darkness at the top of the teeth, maybe a little bit between the teeth. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just something that is giving the illusion that you know, there is a little bit of dimension and depth to these teeth. And now that I've got my dirty, dark 
shadow around the edges and in between the teeth. Now I'm gonna utilize white as my highlight. And when I do this, I don't need a ton of paint on my brush and I'm gonna do multiple teeth at a time. So I'm good. I've got a little bit of white. So really what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a white spot in the teeth and I don't do a whole bunch to the edge teeth because I want those to remain almost in the shadow. And then if you've got a lot of paint on your brush, just wipe it on your paper towel, pick up a, a little bit of your original tooth color, and then you're gonna start to almost blend it into the surrounding area on the tooth. So I want my brightest part to be in the center-ish of the tooth, um, but if it doesn't work out, perfect, don't worry about it. If you can get some sort of highlighted part in the center, great. If not, don't, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about it. But definitely, once you've got that, the wet white in the center of the tooth, just pick up a little bit of your original tooth color and then you can ha you can get it to blend in a little bit more. And you might, you know, work on them for a minute here. I'm not using a lot of paint on my brush. That is the key to my success when it comes to doing a step like this. You might find you need to go back into the brown or back into your original gray color or worst case, you might have to bring back some black in between the teeth because maybe you went too far. So I'm gonna go down to my bottom teeth now. I have white paint on my brush and my bottom teeth, I don't, they don't necessarily have to be as bright as my top teeth and I don't have to do a whole heck of a lot to them. So I did my white dots. I picked up some of my original tooth color just to get it to blend in a little bit more along the edges. I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel and then I'm just lightly manipulating this paint as it dries to blend into the color next to it. So your paint, paint might dry faster than mine. If it does, just pick up more paint if you need to. You can pick up more brown or more of the original tooth color. So if your paint dries and you can't keep working it, just pick up more paint. That's, you know, the biggest thing that will happen here is your paint will dry before you can actually manipulate it and blend it into the stuff next to it or just do one tooth at a time. You could do one tooth at a time too and that will help. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you get your teeth all nice and painted in here, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finalizing our eye flower. We're gonna do the final step on it. I'm using my small brush and I'm gonna be using mostly black paint. Uh, you could certainly utilize any other colors that you'd like, but really what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be outlining my petals. I want them to look like there's a shadow. You could outline one side if you want to so I have black and then I'm just going to come up a little bit on the side you could outline the entire petal if you wanted to so really whatever method you want to make it I think I'm going to outline my whole petal I was thinking I was just going to do half of it but I think I'm going to outline the whole petal to give it make these petals really pop off of the of the skull so I'm gonna just outline my petals with a little bit of black paint. So a trick for me with having nice slender lines with my small brush like this is you can take your black paint and add a drop of water into it. That will make it like an ink consistency and it allows you to get these nice skinny lines to it. You could also, while you're here, if you have any areas of that underneath eye socket that are not fully painted, you can certainly at this point modify or make any correcting little paint strokes that you need to um, while you're while you're in this state in this step because this is going to be the final step on this eye flower. And if you have petals that are touching one another, like I've got some up at the top, you'll see how I how I handle that. 
but I am really just kind of outlining with black paint. And if you have a big outline or a small outline, totally, who needs to know that it needed to be a small outline? You can, you can make it as graphical and as illustrative as you want to with these big outlines around it. We're gonna be decorating the rest of the, the skull in a few minutes, so you know whatever intensity of outline you have is totally fine. So I'm gonna have this little one back here in the back. So when I do these front, these front ones, I'm gonna put this outline coming in front. So that way that's gonna provide a little bit of a, you know, more dimension to it. And then the one that's behind it, I'll just outline it. And then I've got this one over here that's in the front. And you can see I, I continue to keep the curve of the particular petals. So that way it's giving me ample movement within the painting here. And if you wanted your petals to look bigger, you could just make that line wider around the edges. I think I've got to clean up this little section here. And then I'm going to take my black and I'm going to dot around that center piece as well. So that's going to help to make that little center piece pop out also. And then we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your eye flower finished, you can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we are doing the delicate decoration details. And I challenge you to say that three times fast. Delicate decoration details, delicate decoration details, delicate decoration, oh, deco Delicate decoration details, delicate decoration details, delicate decoration details. <laughs> so, I'm going to just freeform this. I'm going to do some additional dots and highlights and shadows and whatever I'm feeling I'm going to do. So I'm going to start, or well, I'm using my small brush. I'm going to start with some of my original blue, my, my custom blue that I made. And I want to put a whole bunch of dots at the top of my nose hole something like that. I think I'm going to put some down this side, maybe in this highlighted spot. And you can do dots, dashes, swirls, X's, O's, whatever you want. This is your painting. You decorate it whatever way you want. Yours can be very symmetrical or very not symmetrical, whatever works for you. See, I'm trying to count the dots from one side to the other here and it's not successfully happening. So I'm just going to freeform the last couple of dots because I've lost count on here. And then let's see what else am I going to do. I think I'm going to lighten up this or add a little highlight onto here. So I put that blue and white onto my brush, something like this and like this. Maybe I'll add a cute little button pedal in through there, maybe a little a little something there, maybe I'll add a little center there. I definitely want to have some of this blue paint in through here. And use a lot of paint when you need to, back off when you think you should. It's really, you know, this is a, a free form kind of step. You can y use this step to modify things if you wanted to. If I wanted to bring this in any, I could certainly do that with this step. I could maybe add some lines on the side of the, the skull and through here. So have as much fun in this step as you want to. Oh, I want to add a little bit of a highlight on this flower in through here. So I'm just using my original blue and white. And I don't know if you noticed, but when I when I'm on a color for something like this, I use that color wherever I want to before I move on to the next. That just speaks to my lazy brush washing um, problem that I have. So I've got that on there, and now I think I've I think I've got my blue everywhere I want. So I'm washing my small brush. I'm going to add a little bit of straight up yellow. I'm going to put a little maybe dot in the middle of these circles that I placed around the eye over here. And then I am going to 
What am I going to do next? I think I'm going to add some black to my brush. So I washed that yellow off. I'm going to use some black. I think I'm going to do almost like a, a shadow underneath this head leaf piece that we have here. And you can treat this as a shadow. You can treat it as a outline. Whatever you want to consider it as is totally up to you. I'm going to do mine like an outline similar to the flower around the eye just so I can keep my my I guess painterly style consistent throughout throughout the uh, decorations my delicate decorations and I've got this little piece over here and again this is all you you when I get into this final stage on on these type of paintings where I know it's all about me just making it whatever I want it to look like. I've got all of my other information on that. I'm going to wait a second there. I'm afraid I'm going to smoosh my hand through that wet paint. So I'm just going to come over here with my black paint and add some marks. But I was saying when I get onto a step like this, I I really like to have fun with it and just not think about it. Just make whatever marks are coming out of my hand. Let my painterly hand take over and add whatever I want. I think I'm going to do a little side swirl on this because I feel like you couldn't see that, that, that original yellow enough. So this black is going to help to just pop it out and make make you be able to see it a little bit more. And again, while I'm using this black, I keep adding a touch of water to my paint, which is allowing me to make these nice, slender, delicate lines. And uh, maybe I'll do some uh, line on these right here. Get these to pop out a little bit. Black does wonders for getting or helping to get these little details to pop right out of the canvas. You put a little black outline around a portion of it and it's just gonna pop right out. I got this little piece up here to do and I think that might be it. I'm gonna give it one last look over before I call it. Um, but I think I think I've got as many decorations on here as I want. So we have one tiny little step left to go. It's going to be with a small brush. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready for the last step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step to any painting, which is to sign it. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to use black paint. And I think I'm going to sign this one in the bottom left hand side. I'm going to be using my initials. You could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you would like. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful sugar skull. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.